Hello, today I'll be explaining about the basics of bubble sort, the swap optimization, and the index pass optimization. So first of all, what is bubble sort? Bubble sort is a fundamental sorting algorithm that works by repeatedly stepping to a list, comparing adjacent elements and swapping them if they are in the wrong order. And to make this easier, let's use numbers from 1 to 5. So let's mix them up first. Now, what it does is it would flip the first two numbers and check if the current number is larger than the next number. If so, it swaps. Now it moves on to here, whether this is greater than this. And 5 is greater than 2, so it swaps. Greater than 3, it swaps. And 5 is also greater than 1, so it swaps again. Now this goes again three more times. 4 is greater than 2, so it swaps. Greater than 3, so it swaps. Greater than 1, so it swaps. Now it checks 2 is greater than 3, which is not true, so it passes. 3 is greater than 1, yes, so it swaps. 3 is greater than 4, no. 4 is greater than 5, no. So then it checks 2 is greater than 1, yes, so it swaps. 2 is smaller than 3, so it doesn't swap. 3 is smaller than 4, so it doesn't swap, and 4 is smaller than 5, so it doesn't swap. Now the list has been fully sorted. And now let's explain why for the outer and inner loop, we have to go from 1 to 5 minus 1. For the outer loop, the worst case scenario is when 1 or the smallest number is at the end. This is because the algorithm favors the highest number, and so higher numbers will be bubbled to the end, while the lowest number would just get displaced to the left. And so the worst case scenario is when the lowest value is at the end, and it has to be swapped 1, 2, 3, 4 times. And so that is why the outer loop goes from 1 to 4. And the inner loop goes from also from 1 to 4 because it's the first index and it compares with the next, second, third, and fourth. And fourth compares with the fifth. And so if it's 1 to 5, then it would also compare fifth to the sixth, but there is no sixth. So an error would happen. So that's why we go from 1 to 4 and 4 would compare to 5. So now let's explain the swap optimization. This is where we sort the list. Here again, 5 is greater than everything, then 3 is smaller, 4 is bigger, 4 is also bigger than 1, and then 3 bigger than 2, 1, 2 is greater than 1. And so even if we might have not done four outer iterations, or in this case we might have, but it would go through a loop, it would go through an outer iteration again until no swaps have happened. This is because when there is a swap that happened, it's the case when a number is greater than the next. So if each number is smaller than the next, no swap can happen because they are already in ascending order. So that's why no, when no swaps happen, the list has been fully sorted and we can end the loop. And let's go to the index pass optimization. This is where, again, I said that the bubble sort algorithm favors the largest number. So let's say on the first outer iteration, 4 is smaller than 5, 5 is greater than 2, and 5 is greater than 1. So notice how the largest number always goes to, goes to the end. So after the first iteration, we can 
know for sure that the largest number is at the end because regardless it would be bubbled up and swapped to the end. And so now we know that the largest number is already at the end so we can only check so we can just check these four numbers instead of checking all five since we, don't, we already know this is in the correct place. So we can just only sort this instead. And so now 4 would be swapped, 4 is greater than 1, so it would swap with 1. And 4 is greater than 3, so it swaps with 3. And notice how the second highest value is now at the second last place of the list after the second iteration. And same for if we check here, 1, and so we can uh, only check this after the third, but this is already sorted. The point here is, after, after x index has passed, we can ignore x as much elements, because the largest value would have already went to the end.